Today we are going to be looking at the anatomy of the lumbar spine and we are going to start with a lateral view of the lumbar spine. To your left will be the x-ray image and to your right is the uh, drawing or schematic that we will use to identify individual structures on each vertebra. All right, let's get started. So let's identify, um, number one, that we have five lumbar vertebrae. And we can identify this as the sacrum. This is not necessarily the greatest projection because we should have moved our patient up and or our central ray up and our patient more towards there, our right. Um, but anyway, this is the base of the sacrum, which you're looking at right here. And above that, you're going to find L5. And what I just drew here was a vertebral body, and you are seeing a little bit of the inferior end plate of that vertebral body. This is L4, L3, L2, and L1. Above that, we are going to see T12, and you can tell that by this coming off here. This is a posterior rib. Okay, It is not uncommon for some people to have six lumbar vertebrae. So um, identifying this posterior rib can be helpful on a lateral view to determine which vertebral body we are looking at. All right, I'm going to erase this and we're going to look at each end of, or at one lumbar vertebra by itself. As you can see in the drawing to your right, uh, see we just drew our body here. Off the back side here is the pedicle. I'm going to zoom in this picture a little bit, outline our vertebral body again. You're seeing a little bit of that inferior end plate. And right back here is our pedicle. Coming off of the pedicle, we have this little structure, which is our superior articular process. And then coming off the bottom side is our inferior articular process. I'm going to zoom back out and we're going to go over to the drawing. So here's our pedicle. I'm going to erase this real quick. All right, here's our body. Like we said, our pedicle here. And here is the inferior articular facet or process, whichever you prefer, and the superior articular facet. So that's what you're seeing here. And this is what you're seeing here. Okay, and pedicle again right there is this here. All right, I'm going to erase all of that for you. Um, remember on the lumbar vertebra, our spinous processes here and here are very blunt. They're not long and skinny like they were on our thoracic vertebrae. vertebrae. Um, they're getting a little burnt out here, but if I zoom in, you'll see a little bit of that spinous process here and here. We're losing them a little bit up in this area. All right, I'm going to zoom back out and erase all of this. Keep in mind you are not going to see the transverse processes on the lateral view. Other anatomy that you might encounter, uh, we don't really see it here, but if we were to go down to the sacrum and come down further, the front part of the sacrum would be the anterior margin. You're also going to see anterior ribs coming down up this way. Remember this is anterior ribs and this one back here is a posterior rib. Um, you could see some soft tissue, especially up through here if they would have captured more. And these right through here are our iliac crests. Also remember that the curvature of the lumbar spine is a lordotic curve or a concave curve. An abnormal curvature of this would be called swayback or um, an abnormal anterior concavity is called lordosis. Swayback is kind of a layman's term and lordosis is the more medical term that we would prefer for you to use. Um, the other thing we need to look at are these little spaces here. I'm going to draw 
this space in between each vertebral body, lumbar vertebral body, is of course the intervertebral disc space. And we would label that just like we would any of our other um, cervical or thoracic anatomy. This would be 5, 4, 3. This would be the intervertebral disc space for L2, L3. This is the intervertebral disc space for L1 and L2. The other spaces that we need to look at are, and I'm going to zoom in for this one, are intervertebral disc spaces. I'm sorry, not intervertebral disc spaces, but intervertebral foramina, the IVFs. And the IVFs are made of, I'm going to switch my ink here, the inferior vertebral notch and the superior vertebral notch. And remember, here is our pedicles. So the notches within the pedicles make up our IVFs. Okay, we are now going to look at the AP projection for lumbar spine. And you can easily identify um, some anatomy here that you've already covered, such as iliac crests of the pelvis. You have got your SI joints running through here, pelvic brim here, I'm going to erase that last one, oops, it's not erasing, all right, there we go. Um, we have our sacrum, and these little holes right through here are the sacral foramina. This is considered the base of the sacrum, and it runs down like this. Okay. So sitting right on top of this, um, the sacrum, we have one, two, three, four, and a squished little five. We're going to zoom in a little bit and look at each one of these. So you can see here are our transverse processes, and we're looking at a vertebral body here. Now, you're not seeing super open intervertebral disc spaces here. But um, that is somewhat common, especially due to the curvature of the spine. So you want to try and make sure your patient's knees are bent um, when you're taking the AP to try and get that spine more parallel to the IR. Uh, okay, and some specific anatomy for each vertebral vertebrae. We have got spinous process that comes down this way. There you go. And our eyes of the spine, there is our pedicle. Now, here is a very important structure that a lot of students will miss. If you look at this portion of the spine, making a little butterfly shape, okay? Look at our nice pretty butterfly. There's this little body. There's some pretty spots. And then we have this nice butterfly shape. The top wings of the butterfly are the superior articular processes. The bottom wings of our butterfly are the inferior articular processes. This area in the middle would be the pedicle. Excuse me, not pedicle. This would be known as the pars interarticularis. Okay, so here's your butterfly, right? And we have pedicles finest process, superior articular processes, inferior articular processes, and this area here in the middle is the pars interarticularis. 
Okay, we're going to erase all this. I'm going to zoom back out. Now keep in mind there are other items that you are responsible for knowing on here, such as the shadow of the psoas muscles, which you can see here. Sometimes you can see a kidney shape on here. Sometimes it's um, difficult to see. I don't really see anything here. You're also going to be responsible for counting and knowing that these are our posterior ribs coming off the thoracic vertebrae here. Um, and I think that should do it for anatomy of the AP lumbar spine. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the famous lumbar oblique projection where we can identify our little friend here, Scotty. Scotty is going to tell us a lot about our projection and whether we've positioned correctly because if we don't see him or if his eyes move to different places, uh, we know we've done something incorrectly. So let's take a closer look. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over vertebral bodies because I think you pretty much have an idea of where those are and I'm going to identify those in red again. Here they are, here. Within each one of those bodies, you are going to find our little friend here, Scotty. Uh, let me erase these bodies. Okay. So let's start with the eyes of Scotty, because as we discussed in previous in the thoracic video, um, the pedicles are also known as the eyes of the spine. So on Scotty, he's got some pretty big eyes. Uh, if we look at the projection right above the little drawn Scotty, you will see his eyes here. Here and over here are his eyes. Okay, they're very big eyes. And these, again, are the pedicles. The eyes of the spine. Now, next we're going to move on to Scotty's ears. And I'm going to use this drawing up top again to demonstrate. You are going to see Scotty's ears up here. And his ears, there we go here and here, his ears are the superior articular processes. Now, Scotty's nice long nose comes out this way. Here we go, here's his nose, here's his eyes. And the, Scotty's nose is the transverse process of each vertebral body. Erase those. All right, now, we've talked about his ears, we've talked about his nose, we've talked about his eyes. Let's talk about his front legs. Scotty's front legs jut down this way. Here we go. And in this video, let's draw, let's trace, or this, not this video, but this projection. Let's trace Scotty all the way the best that we can. Now, a lot of Scotty we're not going to see. Once we get past his collar, we're not going to see a lot of him. All right, here's his eye, which is the pedicle. We talked about his nose transverse process. There's his ear, his superior articular process. And his front leg here, his front leg here, is going to be the inferior articular process. Now the one advantage to doing a lumbar oblique is that we get to see the pars interarticularis and that is going to be this region in between the superior and inferior articular processes. A lot of pathology can occur here and some good indications of um, disease processes. So it's very important that we get a good look at Scotty's collar. Okay, so another structure that you're going to see, and I'm going to switch to green here, is this little space right through here. Right through here. These little spaces are our Z joints, our zygopophyseal joints. And we're only going to get a good look at the, um, the zygopophyseal joints on the lumbar obliques. And here is the zygoapophyseal joint on our drawing. So what makes up the zygoapophyseal, zygoapophyseal joint is the inferior and superior articular processes. Another important 
thing to know about Scotty is that Scotty gives you all sorts of good information. Scotty's noi knows he's pointing towards the side that we're looking at. Okay, if you will remember that we are doing posterior obliques, which means we're looking at the same side. And because this is marked with the right, I see this is also marked with the right, Scotty is facing towards the right, so we know we're looking at right-sided pars interarticularis and right-sided structures. So look for Scotty's nose, look at what side he's pointing to. Now, of course, if this was an L, we would be looking at left-sided structures. Okay, you'll notice that we've gotten rid of um, our drawing, but I wanted to also show you another way uh, of trying to determine if you forget which is which. If you're thinking about cervical obliques and lumbar obliques, here's another little tip or trick. Use it if you like. Don't use it if you don't like it um, to help you remember. If you remember, we looked at cervical obliques. We're looking at IVFs. Lumbar obliques, we're looking at pars and the Z joints. Okay, we're using a uh, tool called CLAP C for cervical, L for lumbar, A for anterior obliques, and P for posterior obliques. Now I'm going to switch colors here. Remember that if you were looking, if you were doing an anterior oblique, you are looking at same side. IVF. If you are looking at posterior obliques, you're looking at opposite side IVFs. Now, for lumbar, if you are doing posterior obliques, you're looking at same side PARs and same side C joints. If you're doing anterior obliques, you would be looking at opposite PARs and Z joints. So just a little tool to help you remember which is which. So if you're stuck on a test, you can draw this out real quick. But remember, cervical, we're looking at IVFs. Lumbar, we're looking at the pars and the Z joints. And we have opposites going on here. So try not to confuse yourself. Okay, other structures that you might see on an oblique would, of course, be the shadow of the psoas here and here. Our iliac joints, our SI joints, this one's open, this one is closed. The base of the sacrum. And last but not least, our intervertebral disc spaces. The last thing I want to draw your attention to is this image, and you would see this sometimes on a lateral image, and it's a pathology that um, is important for you to take note of, and it can be confusing because there's lots of different words out there. But we are going to talk about spondylo diseases. Spondylo. The other meaning of spondylo is spine. So, if you look closely at this image, you will see that this vertebral body has slipped forward and is now no longer in alignment with the sacrum. In a normal lateral lumbar projection, you would see these lined up. I'm going to change this to green. See these lined up in a nice curve. But in this case, we do not see a nice alignment. We see that it has slipped forward. And this slippage has a special name. It's called spondylolisthesis. Listhesis meaning slippage. Do not get this confused with some of the other quote unquote spondylo diseases. There's also spondylo lysis. Lysis meaning breakdown. And a lot of times damage within the pars interarticularis will result in spondylolysis 
and or spondylolisthesis. So just some extra terms for you to know. Thank you so much for your time today, and we will look forward to seeing you more in class.